You guys have been asking for this for a long time. A dash cam install video from front to rear, not sped up, not cut out. I'm going to sit you guys right next to me for the entire install from front to rear, every aspect of it, including my super cool zip tie method for getting through the boot into hatchbacks and everything else along the way. This video is made possible by our pals at blackboxmycar.com. They went and sent us their latest and greatest Thinkware Q1000. As you guys know, I'm a big fan of Thinkware cameras, but this video is not about the product today. It's just about the install, what you guys have been asking for. I'll be reviewing the Thinkware Q1000 in a future video, but if you guys are interested in grabbing a dash cam, head to the affiliate links in the description below. Blackboxmycar.com will help you find a dash cam for your budget. If you're looking for this specific camera, that'll also be in the description below. Every purchase, you guys get a discount and you can help out my channel. So. Let's get started with this install. All right, so today we're working on my wife's 2022 Hyundai Tucson. We'll be installing the brand new Thinkware Q1000 dual channel dash cam. Of course, we got the CPL filter to make sure we don't get that dashboard glare on the main camera. We're gonna be going over super simple install, hiding all the wiring up in the headliner and plugging it into the cigarette lighter up front. And then of course, routing the wires all the way to the back and running it through this little rubber boot here so we can get that rear camera wiring up into here, coming out of there, and somewhere centered on this rear window so we get some nice clear footage of the back as well. All right, so in the dual camera bundle, you're gonna get things like the hard wire cable, which is good for setting it up for uh, parking mode recording where it can monitor your battery. We've got the camera itself. We've got the rear camera, the wiring that goes to the rear camera, 32 gig SD card micro SD sorry and we have the cigarette lighter adapter which is the install we're going to be doing today we have some extra stickies and we have some wire management here which we're probably not going to wind up using we've got uh, an extra sticky for the dash cam mount itself and that's it so uh, and also again the optional CPL filter which is something I highly recommend this is an accessory you can get from blackboxmycar.com and this eliminates the dashboard glare so let's get started. So we're gonna start by getting everything ready. First thing you wanna do is select your location. So we don't have any, we have a sensor on the back of the mirror here. So we're gonna make sure the camera is not blocking that sensor. Um, here is a good place. Gotta remember there's cables that go in the back of this. So we're gonna make sure that when we plug in the cables that we are of the equal, right distance. Cause if we put this right up against here, we're not gonna be able to do that. We also want to make sure that the lens, which is sitting right here on this camera, which is adjustable forwards and backwards, we want to make sure that lens is in the center of the car. So we're going to offset this a little bit to center that lens. Now that we've got a good position assumed, we're going to plug this in, download the app, install the app, and we're going to make sure that view looks great. While you're prepping your camera, make sure you move this little blue tab here because this really gives you that blurry vision type of thing, and you might forget this later on. Make sure you insert your micro SD card. And this specific install has a heat blocking shield. So it's this piece of uh, black that goes on your windshield in the location that your dash cam is going to go. Then you stick the dash cam to this. So we're going to work that out in a moment. All right, so it wants you to use Thinkware Connected. So we're installing that right now. Thinkware Connected requires an account. So we're going to use the uh, other app, which is the dash cam link from Thinkware. So now we have the ability to align the camera. So you just work with it. It's got the, the lines on it so you can determine where center is. There is a delay. So every move you make, wait a couple seconds. That's perfect. All right, so my thoughts on where to put it are good. I'm going to put on the heat shield and then uh, mount this puppy up. All right, so the first step is I'm gonna clean with isopropyl alcohol, this whole area here. Now, we've determined that the slide on and off, some of these slide up and down, this one slides right to left. So it's another thing you gotta think of when you're installing a dash cam. If your dash cam slides up to dismount it, just remember you need to include a little extra room between any plastic pieces up here. Also, when you're installing your dash cam, leave a small gap between any plastic pieces so you don't get any vibration noises. So you wanna have this free floating kinda of in the middle. And then don't forget, position of your lens to center it. You gotta move it over a little bit. So with all that in mind, 
we're going to lay this heat shield down and we're going to do a really good job of making it nice. I know I promised no cuts, but unfortunately right after this, I stuck my head in front of the camera for the rest of the install of the heat shield. So it's just going to appear right now. We are going to lock this in place. All right, so now we can see the view there. We are going to leave a nice gap. Don't forget, we got to plug in things and it's, it's okay if you don't want to leave too much of a gap because you could slide this off plug things in, slide it back. But we also got to take into account this here, this camera piece here. So what I recommend to do is look in the instructions on how it recommends to plug these pieces in because you're going to be tempted to plug in the right angle up here, but then you're going to realize, oh crap, that's not going to work when I get to the back. So the instruction manual wants you to use the right angle connector for the rear camera. So that's what we're going to do. All right, so when connecting the rear view camera, it detected it. We're using the straight connection here, even though the manual says to use the right angle. What that Please does, have a safe drive today. what that does is it's, it's not gonna automatically right angle this up. But to be honest with you, I want the windshield camera to be the absolute closest and ignore all the beeps. It's impact detection, I believe, which is making all that noise. But uh, I want this to be as close to my piece here as possible. So uh, when we get to the rear, you're going to see a little loop that goes like this when you install it up into the headliner. But again, I'd rather have the front be as neat as possible. I don't know why they didn't just right angle both ends, but you know, hey, that would have been the smart thing to do, right? Think where something to think about on your next camera release, right angle on both ends so it doesn't have to stick too far down in your dashboard. So we got a lot of these new cars, these big chunky things right here behind the mirror. So uh, yeah, let's get this thing mounted up. All right, so we've got the view. Got the viewer kicking right here. I usually take my middle finger, put it up, find the position, and as soon as I find the position, I move my finger back and mount the camera. So my finger provides that distance I need to center everything, get everything aligned perfectly. Remember, leave a gap between the wires. Perfect. There we go. Camera's mounted, center of the windshield. All right, so funny story. I brought the boss out. She took a look at it. And she didn't like the way it sat on her windshield. It was too much of a distraction. So after a little bit of deliberation, I decided to relocate the camera to a much less conspicuous place, which I actually like a lot better. No need to show you how to mount it again. We're just gonna pick up right where we left off with the camera mounted, just in the new position now. There we go. And let's run the wire straight up into the headliner. There we go. And you want to leave a little bit of a service loop there. Okay, so we got these two wires going up together. I want to keep them in the same area so they look good. Looks clean. And then if you need to, you can use this to push those wires in if you're having trouble getting them up there. All right, so now we wanna grab this piece here and pull it away. These are just popped on usually. And you're gonna to wanna to run the wire inside here. Um, and you're also gonna, if you need to, you can use your tool to get behind it. to get this out here. There we go. You want to get that head that up inside there underneath the headliner. Everything's good. Make sure everything is tucked in place up here. Give yourself a little bit of slack. We have two cables here. We have we have the power cable, which is going to go to the front of the car, and we have the camera cable which is going to go to the rear. And you notice they're crossed here. So we're going to uncross those. We're going to pull back this right here 
We could do that with our thumbs, super simple. We're gonna take the rear camera wire and go this way. And we're only gonna go a couple feet just to get it out of the way. And then we're gonna take the front camera and go this way. Now we're gonna take this, we're gonna run this down this molding here. We're gonna take this and we're gonna run this along this molding here. And it's easier just to get your finger in there and help it along. And it kind of basically goes up into the headliner and it doesn't do anything to this seal right here. Okay, this seal is still perfectly intact. It's still gonna hold water. All right, so we've made it down here in the trim and we're gonna follow this trim all the way down. If I could stop uh, adjusting the seat with my butt here. So sometimes it's easier to go bottom up and then you can pull the slack out of it. Let's try to get this. It's just this one area here is a little bit of a pain in the butt because it's so tight. There we go. As you guys can see, all I'm doing is peeling and tucking. There we go. Okay, so this is tucked all the way down here and now we're gonna disappear underneath here. All right, so every car has a different way to pull these down. The Hyundai has a clip system. You just basically pop it, but most cars, it's a, a metal clip system where you basically just yank it down. We're gonna bring this up and over this, this area right here. And this is where we're gonna store. So in here is where we're gonna store all the excess wiring. So now that we've got this down, we're gonna come up here. We're gonna plug this in. We're gonna plug this into her cigarette lighter. We're gonna arrange the wire so it goes up into the top section here. So we can disappear, give it a little bit of extra. So we're gonna tuck it into the leather all the way down here. And then we're gonna grab the interior tool and gently push this back so it's not visible. It may take you a little bit of time to do it, but now no visible wire right there. Okay, so now we have this little section of wire right here that's extra. So we're gonna bundle it up. So we get a wire tie right here, wrap it up. And then make sure it's out of the way of the clips and push everything back into place. There we go. Fresh clean install going up, coming down. and invisible underneath. So let's work on this rear camera. So for the first part of this, all we're doing is peeling up that liner really lightly, gently, and stuffing the camera wire underneath it. Once we get to here, can we make room with our fingers? Yes, we can. So we don't need to have any special tools here. If you do, if you need a tool, you can get a, a trim tool and put it in there, but we can just push this up with our finger and not do any scuffing or scratching or anything and most cars are like this of all the cars I installed I was always able to push this up with my finger so get all the way around all right so continuing where we left off we're just going to tuck this all the way back into there so it's not holding up the piece I'll make sure we get that pushed in there we go and tuck this in all the way to the back Now, if you have a white headliner like we do, you are gonna to wanna to make sure your fingers are very clean as you're rubbing through all this. Okay, let's turn and continue down here. We continue into here, and we're gonna to have to go into this window area. As you can see, this takes no time at all to completely hide the wires. All right, so we've gone into the window. Let's see if I can get you guys over there. 
Now that you're in the mini window, we're gonna go up and around. We're gonna probably need a tool to get past. Oh wait, never mind. It's just feeding up in there nicely. Okay, and then we're gonna have to get inside here, which is going to take a little bit of finesse. It's really tight right here, but I can still do this with just my finger. Again, just keep an eye, make sure your cord is not browning your headliner or anything like that. There we go. All right, so we've made it to here and this headliner has like center pieces in here that make it really hard to pull down. So what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and cheat a little bit. I'm gonna try and run this through here. I'm gonna come over to, sorry, I'm gonna run this through here. I'm gonna come over to here and I'm going to run my cable up through here using the zip tie method and I'll show you that in one sec. So the first thing we gotta do is we gotta get this panel down. So as you can see, there's a division here and a division here. So most cars, you just pull. And you can pull these panels down. Some of them interlock. You make sure you have all of the pieces here. All right, now we've got this rubber grommet here. And we're gonna use the zip tie method to get a zip tie through this rubber grommet. And potentially come out here so I can capture it. All right, let's get that going. I've used a whole bunch of things to chase wires, but this super long two or three foot zip tie has been my favorite tool overall. So let's show you how to do this. So we wanna go through here, we wanna go up into this area here. So I'm gonna put my finger here to stop the zip tie. Got the zip tie. Bringing the zip tie up. There we go. There we go. Coming through. And we're all the way through. There we go, all right? So we're gonna pull this back. We're gonna attach Okay, first and most important, make sure your wire is not tangled on anything, because this is something you're not gonna wanna do more than once. Next, you're gonna tape up above, so you have like that cone shape to guide it through. You're gonna position your cable so that it is not impeding on anything. As you can see, I got that angle there. And then we're gonna run the wire straight. The wire is more flexible, so Okay, so this is what we got to pull through. It's a little wide. We're going to take our time. And we're just going to pull it through gently. So first thing, first hump we got to get over is the headliner. You want to be very careful with a headliner because it will crack. Next hump is we're here. We've made it through. Now we're going to have to just slowly massage it through this area here. While I didn't need it for this install, sometimes these things are packed with wire. So I wanna stress the importance of using silicone grease as a lubricant to slide it through much easier. And this is not cooperating as you would, you would have to really expect it to cooperate, but you gotta push it through, help it out. Feed it through a little bit at a time. Okay, so it's choking on the corner. All right, we made it past the corner. That's the thing, you can actually push and pull with the whole zip tie method. As you can see, we're right about here now. And we've made it all the way through. So now we can take this out. Okay, so we're gonna back out the zip tie. Okay, 
Now we're going to pull through some of this. I'm going to bring this up and into this area up here. There we go. Let's just keep pulling this through. I mean, that should be more than enough. I got plenty of spots to, to plug it in up here. I think push this down, locked in place, push this down. Locked in place, sealed all around. See, like there's a gap in the back here. So if you gotta wiggle it to get in, there we go. Now, for the fun part. Make sure these wires routed nicely up and over. Doesn't interfere with the wiper motor. go sit in the truck and find the best possible spot for it. In the meantime, what we've got left is all this spare wire. So let's peel this back a little bit. There we go. We have all this room in here. There we go. Let's use that room for this wire. So of course the GoPro decided not to record this section of me sticking the camera to the window. Not sure what happened there, but all I basically did was peel the tape off the back of the camera and use the app to align it and stick it to the rear window, the same way I stuck the dash cam to the front. And if you go back a few seconds, you'll see that I have a single edge razor blade stuck to my hand and I didn't even know it until watching this replay right here. I know, I promised that this video was not going to be about the Thinkware Q1000 camera, but I know you guys are going to bust my chops if I don't show you at least a little bit of driving footage. So as we end this video, here's some driving footage of the front and the rear. Now you're going to notice that reflection of the dashboard uh, in the shade, and that's because the CPL filter is not installed. I'll be doing the full review in a future video soon, and when I do that review, that will be with the CPL filter installed, and I'll do a comparison to show the difference. I do want to thank blackboxmycar.com for sending me this Thinkware Q1000 dual camera setup so I can do this full install video for you guys. Don't forget, my affiliate links are in the description below. Every time you click and buy something, it helps the channel put some money in the bank so I can buy parts and other items to test for you guys. And before we sign off, let me know what you guys think about this long format video versus some of the shorter, quicker, to the point edited videos that I've been putting out recently. If you found this video helpful, please gently press that like button. If you're stopping by for the first time, don't forget to check out my other content and consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching.